this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to do this chenille stitch, but instead of just doing the stitch, I'm going to show you an actual project. So I'm going to show you how to begin the project with clasping and with this beaded kind of cone end here. Let me see if I can take this off because there are a lot of tutorials on this chenille stitch, but there are not um, a lot of them don't show you an actual project. So I'm going to show you, I've devised a way to do the ends so that it works into the stitch itself and it's really pretty. This can be either a necklace or a bracelet. You'll do the ending the same way. You'll just do more length in between if you want a necklace. This was a requested video. Um, there are a lot of tutorials on this chenille stitch, but people seem to still want me to do it. So, um, I asked in my groups and about tutorials they wanted to see and this was one that was requested a couple of times. So this is what the chenille stitch looks like. It's a modified herringbone is what it is and it's fairly simple and it's pretty quick moving and they make really pretty little bracelets or necklaces and would be really great for the holiday season gifting. So anyway, this is what we're going to do today. Stay tuned and we'll look and see what it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project today we will be using a combination of seed beads for our main weave. We'll be using two colors of 11 -0 seed beads. I have a galvanized permanent finish sweet blush Toho for 111 now and then I have a frosted turquoise opaque frosted turquoise for my second 11 0 it's also a Toho and then I have a 15 0 Toho which is also the galvanized permanent finish sweet blush I'm also going to be using two 8 0 seed beads for my clasping and um, that is also in the sweet blush color they're all Toho then I'm going to use a lobster claw clasp and about an 8 millimeter jump ring. Now, you can use wire guardians if you would like for this project. It would probably be a good idea. You can just sew them on and then attach your clasping with jump rings. Just follow the instructions the same way regardless. <clears throat> I'm going to use some Nanofill 10 pound and you can also use Nanofill 8 pound or 6 pound Fireline. That will work just fine. I'm going to use a size 12 beading needle and I'm going to put onto my needle a wingspan of thread. You will need to extend your Fireline or your Nanofill during this project and I will put a video in the description box beneath the video player so that a, a link for a video so that you can learn how to do that if you do not know how. Also, the material list is always in the information box or the description box beneath the video player also. So a lot of people have asked me about that. That's where that is. So put onto your needle a wingspan. That's when you spread your arms out to your sides like you're going to fly away. Measure from your fingertips of the first arm, the length of that arm across your chest, the length of the second arm and to your fingertips on that arm. Put that onto your beading needle and let's get started. Okay, for this particular chenille stitch we're going to be making a border and then we're going to be putting our clasping through the border. So I am going to use my galvanized sweet blush and I'm going to start with a two bead ladder stitch. And since I'm starting with a two bead ladder stitch I need four beads onto my needle. So I've got my Sweet Blush 11 O's and I'm going to bring them down to the end of the thread. Then I am going to come back through the first two beads that I put on from the tail side. Just like this. Once you have those two beads on your needle, hold on to them and the tail and pull your thread through until you can pull the new beads the second set of beads on top of the first set of beads, just like this. Now you have your working thread coming out of one side of the beads and you have your tail thread coming out of the other side. We are now going to go into the new set of beads that we just put on, or the second set here, just like that. Then we're going to pull our thread through. Pull it straight through so as not to separate the sets of beads. Then grab two more beads and go into the 
second set from the opposite side which your tail is coming out of. From which, I guess I should say. Now you have another set. Go back up through that new set, just like this. Hold on to all your beads and give a little tug straight up. Then add two more sets. And we're going to do this until we have six sets. So go into the opposite side from which a thread is coming out and pull those new beads down. Straighten them up and go through them. Hold on to them. Give a little tug straight through. And this is what you should have so far. Now we're going to put on two more sets. So we'll grab two more beads, go into the opposite side from which your thread is coming out of that new set, and bring down this set. Once you have done that, then you have to go back up through the set you just added. Hold on to all the beads, pull your thread straight through, give a nice tug so that it's all nice and neat and tight, and then add one more set, just like this. And go down through that new set. Now at this point, pull on your tail thread, pull on your working thread, make sure everything is nice and neat and not separated at all. Now I'm going to cut this tail down just to get it out of my way. I've left enough to pull on it in case my beads separate. And now I have my working thread coming out of this end and my tail thread coming out of this end. I'm going to connect these beads into a circle by going from this last set into the side of the first set that the tail is coming out of, right here. I'm going to go through those and I'm going to then push the beads in half like this. And I'm going to pull my thread through. Now, I need to go through the set right next to the set with the tail. So I'll go down into that set, connecting these two sets together. Then I'm going to go up through the set with the tail one more time. Okay. Now you have your beads connected. You can just put something narrow in the middle and separate them. You can see I have a little circle now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my clasping to this side. So because this is tiny and it's hard to navigate and hold on nice to, I'm going to try to do this slowly and as neatly as I can so that you can see what's happening here. You're going to need some of your 15-0 seed beads now, your 8-0, and your clasp. Now we are go coming out of this little set right here. Let me arrange everything. We're coming out of this set of ladder stitch. Man, that's hard to hold on to. And we're going to pick up two 15 O seed beads and an 8 O. And we're going to drop this down to the piece right there. Then we're going to pick up the clasp. Just go through the loop of the clasp and just drop it down. It's not going to stay up next to your bead, so just let it sit where it's sitting. And then go back through the 8-0 seed bead. Just the 8-0. Hold on to that 8-0 and pull your thread through until your clasp comes up to it. Now we're going to go anchor into the very next set right here. So we're going to pick up two 15-0 seed beads, and we're going to go down through this set, just one bead right here, and pull it through. Now we have this. We're going to go into, I'm going to see if I can get you extremely close here. We're going to go into the very next bead that we're right next to where we're coming out. So we're coming out right here. We're going to go into the one right next to it and up through it. Just like this. And pull our thread through. Now I'm going to back off just slightly because I won't stay in camera that way. Then I'm going to pick up two 15-0 seed beads. 
and I'm going to go up through this 8-0 and through the clasp, just like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two 15 o seed beads into each column of ladder stitch. So we've come up through the 8-0, up through the clasp, we're coming back down the 8-0. So now our clasp has been stitched through and we can find our next little set of ladder stitch. So we're going to pick up two 15 O's and we're going to go into the next column. Just one bead. Let me see if I can arrange this. I'm trying so hard to not make it confusing that it's so hard to hold on to. So I'm just going to go into that next set in just one bead here and I'm going to pull down my beads. and they went around my clasp so I'm just going to fix that and pull this nice and neat so that they go up nice and neat next to everything like this then I have to go into the very next bead from which I'm coming out of so right here I'm coming out I'm going to go into this next one right up through that one bead there Now you can sew through the entire column, however, it kind of pulls your beads tight and we need to get through them again for our next step. So we're going through one bead in the column. Now we're picking up two 15 O's, we're going back up through the 8 back up through the clasp, pull those 15 O's down into place right there. We have one column left to go through, so we'll go around this clasp into the 8-0 here. And just the 8-0. Get through there, just like that. Pull your last set tight. And we have one more little set right here. So we're going to pick up two 15 O's and we're going to go through that set. And we're going to go through both beads this time so that we're coming out the bottom of that ladder stitch that we made. And now we have what looks like a little cone. So at this point I'm going to straighten it up by putting something in here and just straightening it up nice so that as I do my next part it'll be nice and neat and clean. I'm going to burn down this little tail a little bit, get it out of my way. Just don't burn it into your beads, just kind of push it to the side so it doesn't block the hole of your beads. Now I am going to do a herringbone stitch through this. So we're going to switch to the <clears throat> other color of 11 O. so I'm using my frosted um, turquoise. I'm coming out of this bead right here, I'm going to go into the next one and just that bead just like that. And I'm going to pull the thread down. I'm going to turn my piece and then I'm going to go up into the next bead. So you want to make sure you go straight directly across into the next bead and go up through it. And sometimes, you know, it takes a second. Right there. Then we're going to pick up two 11 O seed beads and go down into the next bead and just that bead. So exit the side of it and come out. Now we have one more set to do. So we have to go into the next bead here. Just like this. Pull our thread through and pick up two 11 O's. Go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of. Pull this down. Now you're just going to cross over just like you would before. Go into that 11-0 right next to the one you're coming out of and then you're also going to go into the one on top of it. Let's see if I can hold this. So I went through the um, blush colored one and now I'm going to go up through the turquoise one. 
So you're coming up through two beads. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Now we're going to start our chenille stitch. So you do a set of herringbone. This is just basically a mod modified herringbone is all it is. You do your herringbone stitch. And this time we're just going to pick up one bead and I'm going to use an accent color. So I'm going to use my sweet blush and I am going to go from the bead I'm coming out of into the bead next to it and exit that bead just like that. I'm going to pull this down And then I'm going to go up into the next 11-0 in the next set of herringbone, right here. And pick up an 11-0, go down into the very next 11-0 next to the one that you're coming out of, right there. Let's go down into it and pull that one 11-0 down between those two 11 O's that are in your herringbone stitch. Then go up into the next 11 O here. Pick up an 11 O. Go into the 11 O next to it. And then to get up to the point that we need to start our next row, we are going to go up through the 11-0 next to the one we're coming out of, the first one we put the single 11-0 in. So we're going to go up through that one bead right there, and then we're going to go into the 11-0 here. Now, we're going to add two 11 O's of our turquoise color between the 11 O's that we just put on. So we're going to pick up two 11 O's and we're going to go into the next 11 O that's sticking up right there. Pull it through and then pick up two 11 O's and go into the next one. And then pick up two 11 O's. This is our last set. So we'll go through this 11 O and we'll go through the first 11 O of the turquoise set we just put on right here. Now we're in position to add <clears throat> our single beads between the double beads. Come on, untwist you. Oh, so I just twisted it more. There we go. Now I'm coming out of this 11 0 here. I will pick up a single sweet blush color and I will go into this bead right next to the one I'm coming out of. And then I have to skip over the 11 0 here and go into the next frosted one right here. This is what will pull your beads together and kind of make that little floral look of the chenille stitch. Now we're going to pick up an 11-0. We're going to go into the next 11-0, skip over the Sweet Blush 11-0 that was in the previous row, and go into the turquoise color here. Pick up an 11-0. Go into the next 11 0, the turquoise 11 0. And now, to get in position for our next row, we have to skip over this 11 0 down here in the ditch here, go up into the turquoise 11 0 here, and if you can, the 11 0 between the two beads in that stitch right there. So you'll be coming up through this turquoise bead and this sweet blush bead. Just like this. Now you can see how this is pulling my beads into kind of a little floral look. So now that I'm coming out of my 11 0 here, I'm going to pick up two 11 0's in the frosted blue color and go from sweet blush bead to sweet blush bead with two frosted beads in between. So I'm going to put my two 11 0's here and then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. That one was kind of weird, like a different one. 
The frosted beads are kind of weird because in the process of frosting them, I think they chip a little. You can go from 11-0 to 11-0 with your two X or main color 11-0s. And then again, pick up two 11-0s, go into the next Sweet Blush 11-0 or the single 11-0 and go into the first frosted bead you put on in this row, just like this. This steps you up and gets you ready for your next row. Your next row is a single bead. So it's always single beads, then double beads between the single beads, and that is going to be the pattern. So we're going to pick up a single bead, and we're just going to go through the 11-0. You can skip over this 11-0 in between and go into the 11-0 of the next set, the first 11-0 of the next set. You can do that all in one stroke, or you can do it like I showed you previously, one at a time. Now, we're coming out in the middle of this set of double 11 O's. We pick up a single, we go through one of the 11 O's, or the one next to the one we're coming out of, skip over the accent color bead, go into the next set of 11 O's, and pull. Pick up an 11 O of your accent color, Go into your main color right next to the one you're coming out of, skip over the 11-0 in the middle, and go into the first bead of that first set. Pull through, and then go up into the sticking up 11-0, the single bead between the double sets, just like this. Now we're ready again to put in some 11-0s between the accent color 11 O's. So we'll pick up our main color, just like this, and we'll skip over these two, go into this one. And pick up two more, and go into the next sticking up bead. Then pick up two more, and go into the next one, plus go into the first bead in the main color, just like this. So you're going through two beads. This splits that set and gives you a place to put your single bead. So you've stepped up and you've moved to your next row. Pick up an 11-0, go through the 11-0 next to the one you are coming out of, and then skip over that bead in between that's recessed and then go into the bead in the first set, just like that, or the first bead in the next set. Pick up an 11-0, go into the next 11-0, skip over the accent bead, go into the first bead in the next set. And that's all there is to this. Pick up another 11-0, now this is our last set, so we go into this bead, the one next to the one we're coming out of, and then into the first bead of the next set, and then up into the accent bead in between that set. Let's do one more row, and then we'll go to length, and I will show you how to finish your piece. So pick up two 11 O's, Go into the next sticking up 11-0. And keep nice tension on this or it'll be messy and weird. Just give a tiny little tug and um, you can keep everything pretty tight. So each time you go through one bead, just pull a little bit. Pick up two more 11-0s, go into the next set. Pick up two more 11-0s, go into the next set. And then go up into the middle of those two beads in your in your first set of this last row. So you've just finished your third one. You're going up through your first one right here. And then you can begin to put in your 11-0 seed beads.
If you need a little bit more guidance, just go ahead and back up the video and watch several times until you get the pattern down in your head. And then just continue making these until you have length that is a half inch short of the length you wish your finished bracelet to be. So I am measuring from the tip of my clasping here to my last row here and I'm just a little over a six inch bracelet so I'm about six and a half inches in length so that will give me a half inch maybe a little bit over to finish my bracelet so my bracelet will end up to be somewhere between a seven and a seven and a half inch bracelet that's how you're going to figure out how long you want your bracelet to be if you're making this for a very small person or you are a very small person and you're making it for yourself you will want to stop somewhere around five five and a half inches if you are a medium-sized person you'll make the length I'm making around six and a half inches if you're a large person you'll make a seven to seven and a half inch length and then add your clasping so that's how you will figure out how many units you want to make just keep going until you have a half inch short of the length you want to achieve now I have come out of my last bead here I I have put on my row of the 11 O's between the double sets of 11 O's and I am coming out of my last one here and just like you would normally do you're going to pick up two of your main color beads and you're going to go from the sticking up bead to the sticking up bead all the way around just like we've been doing we need to put our border on now so we are going to work through this last set of blue beads and make our ladder stitch so we're going from this last bead here into this bead here just like we've been doing we're going to separate the first bead from the first set of double beads just like this then we are going to pick up four 11 of seed beads in our accent color and we're going to go from this bead down into this one here and we're going to pull these down so that they sit on top they're going to kind of twist and do weird things just have them kind of sit on top like this then you're going to go into the next blue bead so you're going to skip over these 11 O's the accent beads just like we've been doing go into the next set and split that set in half so we'll just go into come on the first bead of the next set here just like this and you're going to pick up four 11 0 seed beads and go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of and pull these down go up into the next set of the main color here the two beads in between the single beads and pick up four 11 O seed beads and put them in between the two beads of the set, the double set here. So go down into the second bead in that set and bring that down. Now we have to skip over this 11 O and we're going to come up through three beads this time. So we're skipping over the 11 out. We're going through the turquoise bead and the two pink beads here. Just like this. Now what we have to do is we have to draw these sets together. So what we're going to do is we're coming out of this set here. We're going to kind of go backwards here and we're going to go into this set right here. then we're going to go back into the set we just came out of back here just like this that draws those two sets together now you're going to turn it and go into the set next to the one you're coming out of here just like this and then we're going to go into the set next to that set 
in the next set of double beads, just like this. And pull it through, come back through the previous set, and then go back through the set next to it, here. Now we're going to go into this set next to the set that we're coming out of, and we have one more set to attach. So we have to go into this set now, right here. So basically we're just sewing from set to set, connecting them. Come here, you. Get up in there. There we go. And then back through the previous set. And back through the set we just connected right here. Come on. I am just having issues here. There we go. Now you can see we have our border perfectly and we're going to put on our clasping my thread is getting very short so I'm going to go ahead and extend it just a little bit so that I don't have to um, interrupt the clasping part and do that so I will be right back with a little longer thread and we will put on our clasp okay so now we're going to use some 15 o seed beads an 8 o and a jump ring now if you have a different type of clasping, just go up through the loop if you're using a toggle or something. If you want to use a wire guardian, just sew through the wire guardian like I'm going to show you. Just come up through the 8 and then around your wire guardian and back into the 8 And then you can attach a jump ring to the wire guardian. Otherwise, make sure your jump ring is closed tightly or that you have a closed or welded jump ring. Then we're going to begin by, I'm coming out of this set right here of my little ladder stitch now, and I'm going to pick up two 15 o seed beads and an 8 o and then I'm going to go through my jump ring, and I'm going to drop this all down. And then I'm going to go around the jump ring, so I'm just going to go I'm going to ignore the jump ring and go back into the 8 and just the 8 seed bead right here. And I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to pull my thread through until I bring that jump ring down to my piece. And I'm just going to move the opening away here. Then I'm going to pick up two more 15 O seed beads. And let's get you in really close here. Whoops, maybe not that close. Okay. So now I am I have everything attached through this one column here. I'm going to go with my two 15 O's into the next column and I'm going to sew through both of the beads in the next column just like this and I am going to bring this down and make sure that there's no slack and then I'm going to move into the next column right next to the one I'm in right there and go up through both beads I'm going to pick up two 15 o seed beads and then I am going to go into the 8 o and around the clasp. So up through the clasp. Then I'll go down into the 8 o underneath the clasp. Pull my thread through. And now I have two, or I ha actually I have three little um, columns of 15 o's. Now I need to do three more because you have to p put the 15 O's and attach it to the clasping through each column. So now we're going to go into the next one with two 15 O's. And then we're going to go up to the next set, up through the next set, I guess I should say. And then pick up two 15 O seed beads oops, come here you, and go up into the 8 here, and then through the clasp, and then and I've arranged them so you can see your last column there. Then go back into the 8 and we have one more little column here to do. So you can see I have my one little column. So I'm going to go ahead and go through, pick up two and go through here.
and I'm going to pull this down. Now I have a nice little end. So what I will do now is <clears throat> I'm coming out of this column here. I'm going to go down into one of the 11 O seed beads, the frosted ones, and then into this center 11 O here. And right between these beads, I can just kind of stick my needle through and guide my thread into a little loop. And then I'm going to go through the loop and I'm going to tie a little knot right down between those two beads. And then, because I can kind of see my knot, I am going to go into the next bead right here and pull that knot in it. Then I'm going to go into this bead here and right between these two, I am going to grab the thread. Now you can see there's two threads coming either way. Just grab one of them and then pull a knot down. And you can travel down into the next bead and then again go into another of these. And you can do that as many times as you would like. I'm just going to kind of sew through and get my thread down a little ways because I feel like it's pretty secure. It's up to you how secure you want to make it. Then I'm just going to cut this and leave a little tag here. So get out of there. I have this little tag right here. And now, I hope I was in camera. You know, sometimes I get so involved I just forget. Then I'm going to just burn this down and just tuck that little ball in there. And now, get all my stuff out of the way. I have a pretty little bracelet. And like I said, you can make this into a necklace. You just do the ends the same way, just make it longer. But look at how cute that is. I'm going to put it on since it's a lo lobster claw. I'll do it off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, here it is. Here is the clasping and here is the body of the bracelet. And it turns out really pretty. Let's get really close so you can see the actual weave. It's just really pretty. And you can do this with any color combination you would like. You can also use 8-0s and 11-0s. You could make it bigger by just using all 8-0s in two different colors. You can modify this so that it is either as minimal or as bold as you would like it to be. I think it looks really cute with these little 11 O's. I think it turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please consider subscribing and um, hitting that notification bell so we can continue to make pretty things together. Okay, bye bye.